Hello guys and welcome back to Star Control. Oh my word, this has been quite a pain, um, I must admit. Uh, I was doing so well, I recorded so much Star Control, you will not even believe. Uh, episode 32 to like 45, it was it was a massive, massive haul of videos. Then realised perhaps I'd not recorded any of the sound. None of it. None of the sound was recorded at all, and I'd been saving the game constantly and constantly through the whole game. So what I had to do is I had to go back all the way to my latest save file that hadn't been just taken up. So I had to go back to episode 19, copy everything I'd done up to episode 31, and then continue to play again. So that's the reason this has taken so long, just having the will to just continue doing that. But anyway, story over. You can see up there the Ilrath of pretty much taken out the Thradash now, I don't know if there's a little bit more Thradash left, the Ilrath are pretty much dead now, there's hardly any of them. And uh, there's also, we're in the beta now, and you can see here some awesome stuff happening. You can press F7 now to see the old map of 2135, you can see um, all of the old um, stuff here. You can see actually, I think these two unknown race up here, I'm going to say are the Urquan and the Korra, so the Urquan are up the top and the Korra are the red ones. Because of course at this time they didn't know who the Urquan and the Korra were. So they were obviously just closing in from their um, circles around the uh, galaxy. And they just happened to be where the Earthlings and Spathian and stuff lived. So um, yeah, the beta is really cool, loads of bug fixes, loads of stuff is awesome. And they've also added this uh, constellation chart, The F if you press F7 again, and it, it shows you all the awesome constellations. It's a really, really cool map now where you can you know, zoom in, zoom out, star search, blah, 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 blah. All, this, all the stuff from before, um, but also those two maps there. So it's really cool. So today, I think we're going to start off by finding four more Rainbow Worlds, that will get us up to six, and then we can do four more at a later date. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start looking around the stars, just save the game, and just have a look forever and ever and ever. If I ever find any, I'll tell you guys, and I'll show you them. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Ooh, is that one? I think we may have our first one. Yeah, that's definitely one there. So here we go, at Epsilon Draconis. It's our first one. Um, I always thought that there'd be one in, in the Draconis constellation. Doesn't look like there's any Thradash here either. So let's just harvest this rainbow world. Let's see what's down there. Ooh, some radioactives. Very nice. Very nice. So, that's the first one down of, well, that's the third one down because we've already been to two. Ah, here we go. Here's another one. Epsilon Lippy. Okay. Here we are, Epsilon Lippy. So uh, this is going to be the fourth one then, um, because of course the, the two we had before were, I can't remember what it was called, the one that Slaylandro talking about, the blue star, and then there was also the one the Shafixi talked about. Zeta Sextantis I think it was. Um, so yeah, there we go, there's a the fourth one down. Let's uh, go and look for two more somewhere out there in this quadrant of the galaxy. Ooh, is that one there? I think that might be one. They always seem to be very close to the sun, so you just gotta look for that flash right as they spawn in. And I just missed it. Brilliant. Uh, Beta Liporis, and I missed it terribly again there. This one's pretty close to um, the Aquari constellation, which I'm about to go to next to try and find some. Uh, and that's where those people that the Malnormo are talking about, so maybe we'll see some of those people soon. Who knows? So let's go to a quarry, see if we can find anything there. Oh, now there was a rainbow world there, but there's also some ships here. I'm guessing these guys are the people who are apparently very depressed because they broke something. Um, I don't know if they're going to be hostile or not. I'm just going to save the game just in case. And... Uh, I'll just try and head to the Rainbow World, see if I can get there before they, they find me. Um, oh jeez. Okay. Should we just talk to them? Let's just save the game. Talk to them. If it goes badly, we can just restart and just go to the Rainbow World and get out of here. Okay, hopefully they're, hopefully they're nice. I'd like them to be nice. So yeah, you can see up here we're in the Aquarii Constellation. It's a pretty big constellation, actually. Um, so yeah. What the Mel normally we're talking about. Let's go in. We've got a few ships to take them down if we uh, if they're hostile as well, so let's go.
Only one of them, so easy to take down. Let's talk. Uh, I suppose, as a courtesy, I should extend an appropriate greeting. On behalf of the Artwick Proctors, I truly hope, for your sake, that your day has been better than ours. Although this really isn't saying that much. Oh wow, these guys are pretty depressing. Um, they are obviously a little bit upset about something, so he wasn't telling a lie. Um, please respond, people. What good would that do? I mean, why should we? We agonized for hours, wondering if it was a cruel twist of fate, or simply a serious case of butterfingery. Ah, the lifetimes that have been spent in the pursuit of the elusive answer to this deceptively simple question has driven many of us down the dark road of self-destruction. Indeed, even as these words strike the ears of any who care to listen, the real question is, does it matter? I cannot say. I wallow in quandary, unable to determine what better atones for my part in the great sin. Should I engage in slow and painful self-determination? Should I commit myself to a long life of painful self-flagellation? Should I throw myself with enthusiastic verve at the problem of collective annihilation? I do not know. Even my mind writhes in anguish of indecision lest the outcome be inadequate. So yeah, I remember now, these guys were given the Ultron by the Druze, because apparently it was really amazing, and it really wasn't, so they must have... Maybe they're annoyed that it isn't amazing, because they thought it was? <sighs> Alright, I'll try. But you know it really doesn't matter. After all, we have a famous Atwick saying, when one loses the reason for existence, one tends to get less motivated. This goes hand in hand with the painfully appropriate credo, we broke it, so we are paying for it. Of course, this isn't really accurate. The situation is so much more hideous. Imagine, if you can, holding within your hands the answer. Only to have it haunt you with its former potential. Ah, cruel irony. The loss of the Ultron grieves us all. So they broke the Ultron. Okay, so apparently they're annoyed that it broke, so they actually thought that it was actually useful. They really bought it from the Druze, wow. It doesn't matter. Besides being of no concern to you, I find discussion of this matter well, distasteful. Uh, the Ultron was not only the thing which ensures total and complete meaning of life for you and I, it is universal. I'm sure that you too are aware of this thing, if only in legend. It granted us all limitless power and knowledge. It has been since, well, rendered inoperative. So since they were near the Korar, I guess, when they were going around on their death march, they probably know quite a lot about the Korar, so let's ask them about them, see what they did. We know nothing of this species that you mentioned. However, while we are on the subject of evil and powerful species, we have encountered a particularly gruesome race that seemed to come from the direction of our Arcturus. That's the Korar, right? Them, they responded with the mighty weapons that sent our delegation to their deaths. Lucky fools. The aliens' dark, crusty battleships are capable of guiding spinning mines into almost any location. And should an enemy get too close, a fiery corona emerges to inflict fearsome damage. In our skirmishes with the race, who called themselves the Kura, we found that by using our own shielding capability, we could sweep through the mines, absorb the corona, and then get close enough to the dark ships to give a lick of our own. In truth, however, they are very powerful and ruthless. When the Kura started to press toward our homeworld, we thought that our deserved punishment was being administered. But then a mystery. They suddenly became disinterested and veered away. Ah, confounding frustration. With the Ultron, I could speak knowledgeably on this subject. To have this quality torn from our grasp emphasizes how meaningless our existence really is. This lack of meaning is what drives my species to the serious contemplation of a quick end. Right, so, um, did they 
Were they in a war with the Korra? Did they, like, fight them? I guess they did. Let's just find out what happened to them. Ah, your query once again painfully reminds me of the Ultron and what it was for the universe. I could tell you all and correct all that is wrong in the universe. All I can tell you is that the Korra live to kill. Their stated purpose is to seek out new life and new civilizations, and then annihilate them. We seem to qualify as such, and that is why it is puzzling that after pursuing us with some tenacity, they suddenly turned away and headed toward Quatiris. Ah, all of this speculation would be unnecessary if only we had saved the Ultron. It would not have taken much. A diving catch, a thrown pillow, even a fuzzy wampus would have broken the fall satisfactorily. Indeed, a panel convened to analyze the possibilities concluded that there were at least 623 ways the Ultron could have been saved if we had been prepared. Ah. Let us see our discussion concerning these matters. Craterus, huh? So that must be like the Korra's like home planet? No, not home planet, but you know what I mean. They're like base of operations, so we're definitely gonna have to go there. Check that out. Maybe not at this point because it's pretty dangerous, though. To say the least, our past is one of a glorious and proud people, coupled with a cataclysm that rocks the universe to its very core. It all began when a chimp rose from the murky bog, and the Utwig emerged as well. In these primitive times, we cavorted about our world, oblivious to any sort of higher purpose. We took everything at face value. Meanwhile, the tendrils of the chimped infiltrated the vast sky canopies of Fars, and then the veils fell. Suddenly, the Atwig was stunned by a collective realization. All immediately and urgently donned veils of every description, hides, leaves, shells, rocks, and even living drills were donned in the early days. You see, the face is the mechanism that expresses many of the primitive qualities that hinder sentience. Now rid of the constant reminders of greed, rage, hatred, and lust, the wisdom of the Utwig was no longer hampered by constant reminders of the primitive urge. Over many generations, mass etiquette was refined to a rock-solid foundation of our society. Sure, the morality riots were expensive, both in lives and in infrastructure. But the result was better mask regulation, specification from your basic mask of grueling but necessary activity to the most highly decorated countenance of stellar representation. These were clearly defined. Recognizing the importance of flexibility, clear-cut and efficient procedures for revision and redesign dealt with the few anomalies. From that moment when we covered the source of our intellectual oppression, we knew that it was a grand purpose that defined our destiny. Are you still listening? Our entire development as a sentient species was coordinated to coincide with the appearance of a remarkable device. The Ultron. We were oblivious to its tragic implication. These guys seem to really think that the Ultron was like something that actually works. I, I don't know who to believe at this point to be honest. However, I just want to know a bit more about this Ultron, see what it actually did. In order for you to truly understand the situation, you need to know more about the Ultron and its unique capabilities. You see, when the Druge discovered the Ultron, they knew that it was ours. The Druge were compelled by intrinsic, universal direction to take it to where it has always belonged. They brought it to us. Oh, the Ultron. It assured total and complete meaning of life for all. The universal. With the Ultron in hand, I could sense not only your motivations and desires, but your purpose. I could act upon these things in ways that would most likely seem mysterious, if not, well, daft. Years later, you would herald our participation in your development as the turning point for your species. The Druge were only one of the few to benefit in this way. Even now, they are puzzled by the way we rewarded them for the delivery of the Ultron to its correct place. In 24 years, 2 months, and 3 days, they will all dance the dance of jubilation. Indeed, the Ultron has allowed us to fundamentally change the Druge forever. The Supox too received many benefits from our use of the Ultron. They can testify to its power. So, the Ultron, we're making the 
Utwig really happy for, for whatever reason. Maybe it was just a placebo effect or what was actually doing something. So what happened to it? Yes, things were perfect. What happened is, well, I, it is difficult to talk about. But I saw it happen. I witnessed the Jin's Raal celebration. I felt the Ultron fill the empty place that I did not know was there. I saw the Grand Proctor pass it to, well, they say that the Chief Gru did not know that it was so heavy and slippery. Perhaps it was a combination of factors. Some who have reviewed the records claim that it was actually a conspiracy. The Commission investigation officially stated that the Ultron was rendered inoperative by the fall to the ground, yet many feel that the whole story has not yet been told. As it struck the ground, I saw its glow fade, and then the painful void incapacitated all. All Utwig immediately donned the mask of ultimate embarrassment and shame with a vow to wear it forever. Bonfires all over Faz consumed all but this mask. No other mask was spared. The visage of ceremonial orations in all its contexts and revisions, as I'm sure you understand. All of the courting masks, from the clever and intriguing veil of flirtatious prancing to the infamous lewd monocle, all were consumed by the hungry flames. Even the most fundamental fixtures were committed to this irreversible fate. The mask of natural bodily excretions once hung in every lavatory. Most of the public facilities have removed the disposable mask dispensers, but every once in a while I still see such a repository, always empty. <sighs> in despair, we gave the broken device to our allies. The Supox, who live at Beta Libre. We just couldn't stand to look at it any longer. At that time, many suggested that we use the Precursor Relic as a form of self-punishment. The proposal was that we collectively go to the second moon of the sixth planet of Zeta Hyades at coordinates 850.3, 937.2, and use the ancient planetarian device to end our existence. After much discussion, we decided that we deserve to suffer. We can use the bomb if we ever decide the time is right. In the meantime, we atone for our grievous mistake with our collective misery. I suddenly sink into a chasm of depression. I must go. Ah, okay, so that's the super bomb that the Mel Norway have been talking about on Zeta Hyades, uh second moon of Sixth Planet. Okay, we're gonna have to definitely go there. Do we so yeah. Go now with neither malice nor joy. Goodbye, Utwig. It's been good talking to you. And, uh, well, we still have this rainbow world to go to. So there we go. We've learned a little bit about the Utwig there. Now it's time to just pillage this, uh, sixth rainbow world. Um, which is awesome. And there we go. Just got a few more radioactives. And ready to move on. So, Utwig looks like they are going to be really unhelpful until we get the oh look at the supox there let's go to the supox beta library we'll go there later